Alright, action. Ah! Ah! One more, one more. Massa, come back, come back, come back. Come back, come back, come back. Come back, come back. They've taken the Japanese. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. You know what, satisfied. Burial. Yeah. But they've left all the brick, these, these yeah. tombs, the enemy just piled and shoved to the side so that they should. It's always a wonderful feeling to accomplish some project. But it is very special to work for Christopher because he is, has this vision and he is the future. And us, as an Asian community, we need more and more of these kind of stories. Even though I played antagonist, Do I know you? James Arendorf. I used to go out with your niece. This has been a real experience. I mean, working with Christopher, I think we were saying this before, he's like the, the go-to, he's like the cheat sheet of being able to do this. I'm gonna let them roll. I'll let them roll. Self speed! Playing American has been awesome. Half my family are American, so being able to kind of explore that. Apparently the, uh... The U.S. government is planning to acquire an extra 100,000 tons to put in the rubber reserve company. But it's, it's also a, a, a amazing satire on the whole thing. You read, sometimes when you're reading the book and the script, you're like, there's, there's a moment where um, the major is sitting on the, uh, the veranda of the house, smoking a cigarette, drinking a coffee, and a bomb goes off in the garden, and everyone just goes, oh, the Japanese have landed in the garden. I think with Erendorf, it's, uh, it was a slightly more intrinsic prog progress because of his theories kind of run throughout the book. Did you find this with his two...? Yes, he's also the philosopher of the book, Erendorf. Uh, Erendorf's second law has become rather famous since the book was written, which is that everything gets slightly worse all the time. I found you throughout this process, if you don't mind me saying it, incredibly precise, yet not um, <laughs> precious. I'm a writer for actors. So, as far as I'm concerned, the actors are the most important element, and I like to interact with them, and I like to watch what they're doing and listen to what their suggestions might be. That's why you're here. It's not to sort of tell people what to do. It's just to, apart from when you whip us, make suggestions. <laughs> of course, the Japanese do have a foothold in Malaya now. There's no point in denying it. Be able to make much progress. The basic kind of foundation of any any good good piece of work is the writing, and the writing in this is superb. I mean, Christopher is an extraordinary writer. You know, his dialogue and description of character is fantastic, and and you always know a great writing that you, as an actor, you've kind of got less to do. I, I picked this up six episodes, and I, but I actually read them through. I just wanted to know what happened and what went on. Today we've been shooting a, a scene here in this uh, museum here in Penang. So having lots of fun and uh, really enjoying ourselves, yeah. If you're rich, how is it possible to live a just life? Well, surely the important thing is your intentions. All these people, for example, are they struggling as a direct result of my prosperity? On the other hand, if it wasn't for your father's prosperity, I might well be dead. I've been uh, really enjoying Christopher's writing. Christopher Hampton's a fantastic writer. He's created a really interesting character in Vera Chang, the romantic female lead in the Singapore grip. I think he really understands the character and he's really brought her to life in a way that I would have imagined he was a Chinese female. Could that be the Singapore grip? <laughs> <laughs>